Everybody, it's Tyler here at the Texas State Championship, checking in team number 2468. Team appreciate, and I'm here with Neil, John, and Christian. And 2468, team that we've been following for many years here, uh, I think it's really the complete package, both in chairman's wise and also raw performance. They have a chairman's award this year, and they've won a uh, district event as well, too. And of course, we're going to be following this robot all the way through. You just got to look at this packaging here. Just a very slick robot. The way they've been designed, they shoot really fast as well, too. Climb looks nice. We'll talk about all this coming up here on Behind the Bumpers. Your destination for first content, updates, and gaming. Welcome, Welcome to, to the fun. fun. First Updates Now is supported by Stryker Careers. If you are a college student or recent graduate looking for an incredible internship, take a look at Stryker. Stryker provides a housing stipend, great pay, and an opportunity to work with state-of-the-art medical technology equipment. Discover why so many first alumni are coming to Stryker for their internship or career at careers.stryker.com. If you are planning on attending the World Championship, come meet others in the fun and FRC Discord community with our combined meetup on Friday, April 22nd at 11 a.m. local. Location will be announced closer to the event, and you can stay updated by following in either the fun or FRC Discord. So, Neil, we're going to start with your uh, intake on here. Just talk about uh, what's gone into it. Like, what are maybe some concepts that you didn't go with, and how did you end up with this type of intake in particular? All right, yeah. So, initially, what we did was we were vectoring across the ground. So, you can see these mechanism wheels up here. They're initially on this roller, and we were basically translating the ball on the floor. And for this, for this event and last event, we switched to this roller here, which is a pool noodle, and which has, like, some kind of grippy material on it. And we translate the ball in our robot now against this plate. And so that's helped a lot with getting the ball into our robot as fast as possible and then translating it into our transfer. What did you have here prior to the pool noodle? Uh, so we had, we had these same wheels sure. down here, basically. It was all along, spaced out with some spacers. And what, what's the improvement you've seen going from like a vectored intake wheel to a natural pool noodle here? So this, so before, we would really just like push the ball along the floor yeah, and then sure. intake. It wasn't really ideal for the drivers because I would spend time lining myself up so I didn't have to use that portion, basically. So yeah, so this is a lot easier for me to use when I'm driving around. It basically touches it and, and takes it in within seconds. As a driver looking at this game with, with cargo acquisition, uh, it, it looks like your team driving around just, just seems to kind of know where the cargo is and you seem to handle that really fluently. When you're like, what's your thought process when you're driving and you're trying to cargo that next, that, acquire that next cargo piece? Yeah, so basically what we do during every match is we usually plan with our alliance which side of the field we're going to cycle. And what I try to do is if I shoot two balls on, the other, on one side of the field, I immediately go to the other side because I know those balls are either going to be coming out on that side yeah. or the balls are... There's, there's almost always balls on the other side of the field, which you can't see. And we use our driver cam here to see the balls on the back side of the hangar, or if it's in the next, they're hiding it close to the hub. This helps a lot with that on our driver station. Well, let's keep moving on here, Robot. We're going to go into that uh, transfer and shooter station. John's going to talk a little bit more uh, about that. Uh, love to hear about, uh, particular when the cargo actually angles, how you've tried to mitigate like jamming. And then as we go to the shooter, talking about like trying to get your spin right for when the shots are actually going in. So for a transfer, um, we started with integration with intake. Uh, we've got these wheels here, make sure the ball gets gripped on. And then we've got a series of belts. And our, stand, our transfer is made in two stages. Um, we've got the first stage here, which is this pair of belts and the bottom pair. And so that's for intaking cargo. And then the cargo is stored here. Once we intake a second one, the first one gets moved to the second stage, which is run by a second motor. Um, that runs quite a couple more belts and wheels than the first one. And that, uh, the first ball gets stored in the second stage, second ball gets stored in the first stage. Uh, that's how we store our balls. It makes it really convenient. There's, it makes it easier on programming because sure. we can just run the motors. Um, we had planned for sensors. We didn't really get to that as these went on. And then uh, we're stored here, come up to shooter. Um, our shooter and transfer are kind of actually slightly belted together. We've got an idler pulley here. So this belt here is, act this belt is run by our um, transfer, but this is, we call it the kicker wheel. It's run by the main flywheel motor. And then here, this is all, this wheel here is also about to the tra uh, transfer. And these two help bring the ball up, kick into the shooter, and then the flywheel and the top flywheel shoot it out. And Did you have any modifications uh, that, between competitions? Like this, this material here, was that different from the beginning or anything like that? Uh, so, let's see, between um, the, for our first two events and yeah. uh, Texas Champs, um, we've added this wheel here and this belt because we used to have a dead spot in this section. 
We added some of this uh, kind of foam, kind of helps center the ball because um, a lot of teams have two flywheels. We've only gone with one, so yep. centering the ball has been a little bit of a challenge. So that's this is what helps with that. Uh, we also changed this to an idler. Before the this stage of belts was also ran by the shooter, but that was drawing a lot of current and also slowing the shooter down when the second ball came up. So we disconnected that. Now only the kicker wheel and the shooter run are run by the flywheel. Yeah, it makes sense on that. So let's keep moving on. Now we're going to talk about your climber next. Hand it back over to Neil, and then uh, we'll talk more about programming in just a little bit as well too with your climber. But talking about from a mechanical side, uh, how did you you know figure out like the packaging that you have? Because obviously your your whole mm -hmm. cargo path is going to be on this side, and then you got all the climber on this side. So talking yeah. about that design process, and then the actual physics that mm -hmm. go into the climber itself. Yeah. So basically, when we were first doing our robot design, we our main design philosophy is we we're going to split our robot into three main sections. We're going to have shooter and transfer on one side, climb in the middle, and then electronics on the, other, in, on the other side. And so that was basically how we decided to put our hangar in dead center. It also helps with our center of mass. So when we translate on the bars, we aren't swinging that much. I want to say we don't swing at all most of the time. So how this works is basically, Christian, do you want to extend the telescope? So how this works is if we were under the mid bar right now, we would extend first, drive onto the mid, and then Christian, go down. All right, so this hooks us onto mid and puts us our robot on these passive hooks right here. That's just held on with some bungee on the back. And then what we do is you want to put the pivot out. So then we pivot our robot. So imagine the pole is right here, and then we extend our telescope again. And then that puts us on basically, and then we pivot back. So in that process, we have a sequence out of automation with the pivot and the extension that translates us onto the high bar really smoothly and we almost have no swing. And we repeat that process basically for the traverse as well. Yeah, and we'll be talking about some automation just a second too. The last thing I want to ask on this is you talked about uh, not really having much swing and I agree watching your team it seems like you're just really fluid especially from mm -hmm. high to traverse high to traversal yep. uh, a lot of teams really hit that hard mm -hmm. how did you like when you're looking at from a concept and in, in, in design for this was that like really first in mind to say hey we just need to be able to just go from one to the next and not wait at all yeah so we really didn't want to swing yeah. with our climb design so we kind of focused around that but the main thing that so at our first event, we were actually swinging quite a bit. And the main reason for that is we weren't utilizing our pivot on the push off. So now with the automation, we've utilized pushing off with our pivot and extend or pulling in with our pivot or our telescope at the same time. So that really mitigates almost all of our swing. And we're always basically contacting two bars until the very last second. So that allows us to not swing at all. Let's wrap up and talk about some of the automation programming that goes into it. Christian's going to be covering that. Uh, so talking about that, and then we're going to uh, take a look at your driver station for a little bit more as well, too. All right, so uh, our climb is fully automated in code. So from start to traversal, we don't have much driver input. Essentially, um, we just have like, encoder, encoders on uh, pivot and uh, telescope. And um, we just say, go to this position, and then the next stage, it's the whole uh, setup. And then, um, for drivers, how they handle it is they have a dead band switch, which is this one, and then they hit A to start it, and that's they hold A or hold the dead band switch until we're done. And if they let go, it stops at any point for like safety reasons if we're falling off or whatnot. So I can show you a bit of it. But um, the line goes so far because it relies on current drawn from the pivot, so we know we're lashing to the bar before we uh, start our next stage, otherwise we would fall off. So that's why it only goes so far in um, testing. Um, that's about it for climb. Let's talk about uh, what's on your driver's station a oh, little yeah, bit more sure. uh, from the programming side. Yes. All right, so this year we're using a uh, custom dashboard, which we didn't use last year, but back to doing that. So we have uh, IME feedback. We got a lot of driving things set up, like um, what dead band one of the controller, max uh, feet per second, and then velocity, like translation, how fast you're going to rotate, and other. Uh, this is for climb and shooter, and just like set up for pre match. We also have a little auto selector here, we can just choose which auto we want. And uh, it'll display a little picture right here. We also have a checklist and then a match view for our driver camera, which is on the other side of the butt. And then um, we have a few things about like what we're doing in either climb or if we're aligned to the with our shooter or whatnot. So uh, we also, of course, have network table variables, but that's standard. So another thing we have is our uh, path planner, which we had for a few years now, but we've been adding new features every year. So um, let's draw. This is our first year doing Swerve since like 2015, and that was before we had a path planner. So 
we didn't have the ability to encode where the bot should be pointing at within the path. So this year we added that feature. So say I can play this path and the bot, I don't know if you can see well, but it'll turn along where each of these like low points are pointing. So um, we also added a new curve type, which has been, I think, pretty helpful for moving a serve. Um, see if I show you older one. This path isn't a great example for that, but oh. wait, sorry. So this is our old one, which in this path is not a great example, but if we do like more curvy things like uh see this one? This one, see this is like there's a big, big a lot of curvature we're going for, so with our new curve type it shortens that out a lot, which has been pretty helpful. So and as always we uh for calling doing thing like doing other robot things like intake or shooting within a path, we have these uh little command sequencer. We pull up the commands from our robot project and we throw it, serialize them into the path, so they're written all of this is written to one path file. We load that at uh, runtime and then just run a file through, and that's how we do our, our autos. Well, 2468, we really appreciate you taking the time to talk to us uh, about your robot. Uh, this is a fantastic package. I, I love the program, and we've talked about it for a couple of years and what you've done for that, too, and it's uh, very inspiring to show off other teams what they can do. So thanks a lot for taking the time. Best of luck here at uh, Texas State, and can't wait to see uh, World Championship performance as well. Thanks a lot. Thanks to Striker Careers for their support in this video. First, alumni and mentors are making Stryker a top priority for their internships and careers. That's because Stryker knows that those in first are the leaders and innovators of tomorrow. If you want to help make the world a better place by creating life-saving medical devices and technology, get started at careers.stryker.com. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell to stay up to date on our new videos. Keep the conversation going and provide your input to our content. Watch our live shows at twitch.tv forward slash first updates now. Join our Discord at discord.gg forward slash first updates now. And check out Fun FTC on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And First Updates Now on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter.